sec as he can we get closer to that story. Sharon Smith is Hi. in Cavan. Sharon, good afternoon. Sharon, you're listening to the true mother and baby home and the the scenario now with all the the, the remains being discarded to use Catherine Corliss's phrase as uh, aptly put. Go ahead, Sharon. Well, discarded. It's like genocide. Yeah. Mingala would have done something similar with children <laughs> in <laughs> before the war. And uh, and you I, you were in a mother and baby home, as they call I it. I was. I was in St. Patrick's home on the Navin Road. Yeah. And I have told anybody who will listen that whilst I was there and I was locked into the infirmary upstairs because I might leave, um, there was windows facing out onto the back. Mm-hmm. and uh, there was crosses. There was little white crosses, and there was black metal crosses, uh, wrought iron crosses. And I often thought, I, when I saw them, I was like, uh, the metal ones must be grown-ups, okay. and the little white ones yeah. must be babies. Now, I have told anybody who will listen, I've told the Commission of Inquiry, and that I've heard nothing from anybody regarding it. My solicitor is looking into it uh, as as to, you know, what to do next. What is there? And, that, what and what, there. what age were you when you ended up in St. Patrick's I, home on I, the Navan Road? Well, I spoke to you before, Joe, but I was 16 when I was the first time in the home in the Navan Road in 1980. Mm. And uh, I was explaining there to Angus and uh, your other researcher that... Uh, I was locked in upstairs because of, uh, as I say, I didn't want to leave. I, I wanted to leave, but um, mm. I was a private resident in the home. Uh, my mother paid for me to reside there, yeah. and that, and uh, so I had different treatment from other girls. I wasn't allowed to mix with the other girls. And, and what it, happened to your baby? Um, well, I went into labour and I was mm. taken by ambulance to the hospital, St. James's Hospital, Dublin 8. Now, none of the hospitals are included in the Commission of Inquiry. I don't know why, because they were an automatic vent for the mother and baby homes. After you stopped having your baby in the homes, the Eastern Health Board transported you from the home to a hospital. So all should be included, the Eastern Health Board, okay. the hospitals... The whole lot. And were you were you able to keep your baby? No, I wasn't. Yeah. I I had to leave the hospital with my mother five days after giving birth. You laughed. I told you before that there was two mm. pints of Guinness, two bottles of Guinness left on my bedside locker, and that uh, you know, as new mothers, Guinness was meant yeah, to be good for you. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and that, but anyway, um, I was given the two bottles of Guinness, but not the baby, <laughs> who oh, was mine. Anyway, uh, I had to leave the hospital, and I was dumb, I was naive. I had to leave the hospital with my mother and my sister and leave her behind in the hospital. So the hospital is comparable as far as I'm concerned. And and did you have you, have you met up with your daughter since? I have met okay. up with my daughter, right, and I had right. a very healthy and wonderful relationship with her. Okay. But now, did you ever say to your mother, why did you put me into the mother and baby home? Well, after being estranged from my mother because I couldn't understand, like it wasn't just my child, it was her grandchild. Um, But you have to remember, and I've said this before, that my mother was only one cog in the wheel. There there was, if she didn't have the religious orders, the state, and everybody backing her, she couldn't have done what she did. And that. And also, I was a juvenile. I was 16 years of age. Where was my protection? Where was, you know, I was meant to be signing documents on my own without legal representation, without any representation whatsoever. Um, I went into labor on my own. I had my child on my own. Everything I did, I did on my own. And that with no support from anybody, because there was no support. You were treated like an animal. And your belief, Sharon, is that there is... But by the way, did you ever... Was there ever any ceremonies for children being buried in in that field you remark upon? Um, well, it was a kind of a back garden. I remember yeah. roses and stuff, but... And a vegetable patch. And that, that would be the Kempton housing estate now, wouldn't it? Well, that's my thing. Yeah. Um, I live in Cavan, and to get in and out of Dublin, I have to pass by that... Oh, that's right, down the Every Road, time. Yeah. 
And my heart is broken driving past it, thinking of the people who honestly bought houses in good faith on a site, and God knows what's under them. Just God knows what's under them. Okay. And okay. that. And it's, it's, it's disgraceful. The, the way we were treated then and now, Joe, every commission and every inquiry is done in private, whereas we would like a public inquiry. Mm. Um, you know, it's out. Everything, everybody knows what happened was wrong, so why not make a public inquiry? Okay. And that it, it, the way we're treated now is um, secrecy, uh, telling your story to pl- placate you more or less. And that, but nothing is being done. I first applied for my files, Joe, 11 years ago. I'm still without my files. I don't know what was said about me. And who has, your, who has your files, Sharon, do you, do you believe? Well, to in say? the beginning, it was supposed to be St. Patrick's Guild, yeah, and right. that was like banging your head off a brick wall. They were so cruel, it wasn't even funny. Well, were those files not handed over to Tusla? They were handed over to Tusla. Now, St. Patrick's Guild told me they were handed over to Tusla seven years ago, six, seven years ago. Tusla said they received them two and a half to three years ago. Okay. So I want to know where they were in the interim period. And also, what is taking Tusla so long? I know they had 13,000 files. Pardon me, Joe, my voice is going. I know they've had 13,000 files, but uh, surely it doesn't take that long with people who are constantly requesting their files. And that I was pregnant again, Joe, in 1982, and I had a second child, and I got on to Cherish and got myself a placement in County Meath with a lovely woman and her family. My mother found out, came and got me and brought me back to St. Patrick's uh, home in the Navan Road, Mm. where again I was locked up in the infirmary upstairs. And the only place I was allowed was in the halls and the kitchen at given times when I was to do some work. Plus I was given time when my mother did send a letter with money in it. I was given time to go into the shop at the bottom of the stairs in the building, just inside the front door, which sold hand-knitted baby items that the women were making and that the nuns were making for your baby. So they were making money off you selling these items. And you were never... I still have my blanket. You were never allowed to give those items to your child. Everything was an identifying feature. And even the gold I left for my children... um, had my, their names on it. I had my name obliterated and their names put on it. But that would have been their birth names. And that was obliterated from, the, uh, from them. And when I went back to ask, did you give my stuff to my children mm. that I left for them, I was thrown a box across a table and told to root through that. And I told you before, I put my fingers into the thing of gold and all I felt was misery. And she said to me, don't worry Take whatever you want. It wasn't the monetary gold I wanted. Of course, of course. And that. But that's the kind of heart Uh you were dealing with from beginning to end. I ended up with an episiotomy on the second child and miscarried nine times after that, mostly second and third trimester, because uh, I couldn't carry a pregnancy after the damage that was done to me in Hollow Street Hospital, where I was sent from the Navin Road. Joe, the cruelty continues because we're not being given any information. That poor man you had on before you, what kind of a life, wondering where you come from, who you are, where your mother is, and that... What okay, kind of lots, society uh, are we? And there's, mo- and, and there's more to come, unfortunately, Sharon. And I take oh. your point that and there have been other calls this week that all the mother and baby homes, it should be investigation to see Every, where the children I, are buried. I, I'm 10 miles okay. from Castle Pollard, and I go there all the time, knowing what is under my feet. OK, OK. Sharon Smith and Cavan, thanks indeed. Patrick in Dublin, thanks as well. I did I say a proper goodbye to Liz McKenna in London and her great news over the weekend. More uh, after this break. 51551. Talk to Joe on 1850 715.